Hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Chat. We are having a fun time because... Oh, because audio sucks butts. But also, someone who doesn't suck butts and joining us today is Kyle Bailey. How are you? So I was eating dinner with my parents, KFC, obviously, because we're American. But uh, yeah, glad I, glad I could be here. Yeah, and you were definitely not muted for the first half of you being introduced, so don't worry about it. Awesome. But... I do that all the time on my streams. <laughs> I always forget to unmute myself, and I'm like, at this point, it's just a part of who I am. So I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. I do that. Uh, sorry, let me introduce Save Data's David. Data? We have Data. What's up? <laughs> Data's Data here. the monkey from, like, Mega Man Legends? What? <laughs> I was thinking Star Trek, but I'm okay with Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Um, whenever we do studio stuff, uh, I have to turn the microphones all the way down because, like, they click a lot when you don't wear them, and so I always forget to turn Chris up. So every single time I go, Chris, you were totally on for that whole time, but if you want to repeat it for some reason, you could just do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every single time. Uh, folks, we are... Sorry, I'm very flustered because this whole audio thing was happening, and I was like, do I have to cancel the show? And I was very upset. Um, we're a gaming podcast, if you didn't know that, that's why you're here. Um, today we're going to talk about lots of cool things, including Blizzard, GTA, and Horizon Zero Dawn. But before we do that, we got to talk about what we've been playing. I'm going to go first today, because I only have one thing I've been playing, because I've been moving. And that one thing I have been playing is a little game called Loop Hero. Have either of you played this game? Uh, I have not played it. I actually watched a friend play it for about 10 minutes last night. He was just showing me how it worked, and it looks pretty cool. Sort of a mashup of a bunch of different things, and I, I am interested in trying it out for myself. But as of yet, I have not touched it. I have talked to Zach also from Save Data about this because he's addicted to it. And it is a mashup of all the things I hate most in games, so I will not touch this game. <laughs> <laughs> That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, yeah, because you mentioned that I hate card games, but this has like these cards are more of like they're not an actual card game, so I, I wouldn't say I hate it. But um, it's weird to have two games that so far that have come out this year that are all about like like I've had actual like discovery moments in it. Um, I know people talk about that, or at least people. Jeff Gersman uh, of Giant Bomb talks about uh, a lot of like the community stuff around when Fez first came out and like the discovery mm -hmm. with that stuff. And I'm kind of feeling it with that uh, with Chris at work because I got him into it, and so he's like a little bit behind me, and probably at the time was a little bit behind me. He's probably beyond me now. But we'll like figure stuff out with combinations with cards and stuff. Be like, oh, I can't believe that's happening. And it it has this weird unraveling story, kind of like Valheim, that you just like when you play the game, you're like, oh, I know what this is, and you're like playing it a couple times, and you're looping around, and then like something changes, and you're like, oh, that's what this game is now. So it it, it does that really well. Like it it adds mechanics really well, and it adds them in a way where. Like, now that I look at the screen, I'm like, oh, yeah, there are things missing from the the uh, HUD or, like, the layout. and But you don't notice it until they add the thing that goes there. And it's I think it's really oh. clever. And, like, this whole time I'm like, oh, yeah, that menu was missing, like, four options. But I never noticed it before. Because, I, like, I looked over at Chris, Chris's thing when we were playing definitely before work started. And uh, I was like, oh, that's weird. He doesn't have that option yet. And then I was like, it's so it's cool because we kind of come in and do this back and forth about it. Anyways, for people who don't know, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this game. It's basically like a reverse tower defense. You are the little guy running around and you place the like monster things that you fight. Uh, you're stuck in a time loop. It's very rogue-like-ish. Uh, you get upgrades and to carry on. You get armor. You put it on your guy. Uh, you do all these battle stuff. Very fun. It's only fifteen dollars on Steam. GOG. Definitely check it out. Um, yeah, I, it's I, no nothing anyone said about the game made me want to play it. I just was like, oh, this looks like fun. So then I played it. So it's kind of I'd like. I don't. I wonder if there is a demo available. There should be a demo available if there isn't, because it's it's one of those games that's like you just got to play games it. Games have demos anymore. Like there's a yeah, couple. I mean, in yeah, the indies, Outriders has one right now. Yeah. I think the indie scene is really big on demos. Like itch.io games have demos. Um, mm. I feel like 
especially uh like my twitter is like all indie developers so i feel like i i come across a lot more demos i um, mine is mostly just like whatever it's, it's i guess it's a mix and it just seems like most big games don't have demos anymore yeah that's oh, man i true. miss every every once in a while they'll release like a um i'm trying to remember what it is like a uh a benchmarking tool that's like within the game and it's like separate from i don't know sometimes mm-hmm. they do that but that's like the closest that we get i think the last i'm trying to remember one of the last great demos did i think bioshock the original peter bioshock jackson's demo. king kong or king demo. kong yeah oh bioshock was a demo yeah. um, Fun fact: peter jackson's king kong the only game not directed by tim schaefer that has jack black in it only one really huh. yep. interesting and i'm more surprised that jack black's actually in that game than i am by the Tim Schafer effect. <laughs> Wait, is Adrian Brody in the game? I have no idea. I just know the, the Jack Black one. <laughs> well, do your research next time before you come on this show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're out of here. Um, so yeah, that's the only game I've been playing because of moving and stuff. Haven't even checked in on Dragon Quest Eight. I uh, haven't checked in. I'm still playing Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I am dying to start playing Oblivion again. Because I think now's now's the time. Um, and with Game Pass or just in general? Well, I, I've played it before. Uh, just with since it's on Game Pass now, and I was slightly inebriated, and I bought all the DLC, and I mean <laughs> all the DLC, including the horse armor, including the oh. DLC that you can only buy on the Microsoft <laughs> website. Oh, um, Oh no! Yeah, so I should probably play oh, that. Oh no, Will. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I, I live a dark life. Anyways, um, <laughs> that's what I've been playing. Kyle, what have you been playing? Well, it has been a while since anyone's actually asked me that question. Uh, Call of Duty Warzone. Normally, I do like an hour or two um, or three with my brother uh, over lunch. So I hope no one at work is watching this. Um, <laughs> Me too. Uh, um, <laughs> Me three. Right. I'm, still, I'm, still doing, I'm still doing my work. Um, no, uh, we, you know, we normally just do that. Uh, I haven't played around with any of the new zombie stuff, so I don't, I don't really care about the zombies anymore. Um, other than the last time that we all played the zombie mode. Um, that I was fun. Really touch it, which was fun. I, yeah, it, it, I mean, it's very different from the original zombies, which... I mean, you got to give them credit where credit's due. They've expanded upon that to the point of making probably billions of dollars, which is great for them. Um, but yeah, other than other than Warzone, uh, Half Life Alex, I do my weekly stream on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Uh, it's been a ton of fun. I'm about five hours into it now mm-hmm. and uh, loving it. It's the first full VR game that I've ever played, other than uh, Super Hot, which isn't. It's it's less of a full game experience than just yeah. a little. You know, the same thing over and over and over again. Karen uh, was, mine... uh, Karen was oh, yeah, sorry, she, not she, to interrupt, she but in. she, she was watching. In. She was really enjoying it. I like yeah, heard I her giggling never... from the other room. I'm like, what are you watching? She's like, Kyle's playing Half-Life I'm Alex. Making, I'm watching Kyle make an ass of himself <laughs> on, on stream. Uh, no, she was great. I always forget what her Twitch username is. And I'm like, who is this person? <laughs> like, like, I feel like I know them. And then she's like, oh, it's your Warzone buddy. And I was like, Cody? Like my brother? <laughs> she's like, no. <laughs> No, um, uh, but no, Karen. I, I told her. I said we need to get back on Warzone and get get another sub. She one. she's been playing again, and I keep like because the TV's right here, and I keep like looking. I'm like, oh man, I should play some Warzone. And then I it's it's fun. It's I mean, ninety three gigabytes to download on my PC, it's, and I'm like, no, that's not fun. That's not fun. At my, all. Maybe at my um, new new place with my new fiber internet, I I'll download ooh, it. There you ooh. go. Sorry, yeah, I. Well, no, I believe me. Hey, I anytime we get to talk about fiber internet, it's a good time. Um, no, a buddy of mine also got me for my birthday Sniper Elite Four. It's the first one I've ever played in the entire series. A lot of fun. Um, a little bit more my speed than than Warzone because I like to sneak it around. I, I've always been a big fan of Splinter Cell, and this is kind of like Splinter Cell with sniping, uh, which you know is fun. And then every once in a while, I get I get some buddies to play uh, golf with your friends, which is a game I love because it's so it's it's just so low key and and just very relaxing but also you can get really into it and it's extremely frustrating. So uh it's a lot of fun especially if you have a bunch of people to play with. I think you could play with up to 18 people or 20 people. 
So wow. we should we should probably try playing at some point. Ooh. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I th- and it's cheap. Co stream ten dollars. I would be down. Oh, I'm it down. So much After fun. the the hell that was Among Us on Extra Life. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I just remember Ian being like texting me. He's like, hey, we need to do something else. Because <laughs> there were so many people talking. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, I uh what was I gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say, um, we should do I've been thinking about this and I'm glad you brought it up, but we should do a I wanted to do a stream where we played I'm gonna promise this right now because Ian loves when I promise things. But I wanna play through Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Ooh, and I think yes. that would be fun. And if you said you promised me earlier that you have you extensively know Splinter Cell lore by heart, so I heard I, you say I, that. So. I I do. Um, <laughs> I you know we're gonna turn this podcast into just the Splinter Cell podcast right now. Yeah, it's the Cell um, Cast. So Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell is a game where you play <laughs> Sam Fisher. <laughs> What was he? What was? What did they recently? Third echelon. What did they recently whore Sam Fisher into? Um, oh, the, I feel like they um, do that. Fortnite. He was in Fortnite. Was he? Or wasn't was he? he no, 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 that no, no. Ubisoft, that Ubisoft game, mobile right? game. It was a mobile game with it was like the, the one that had the black power game. like yeah. symbol. <laughs> oh, that! Oh my gosh! Yeah. No. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, was it? it was like it was like a Rainbow Six Hero Squad or some crap. Wait, yeah. wait. Was it? Was it for? Um. Uh. Oh my gosh! What is that? It's what not. That? It wasn't Siege, was it? Well, yeah. No, 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 no. It was mobile game. It wasn't the real game. Hold on. They yeah. might have had a skin for somebody in Siege. For Anyways, me. that's all they do with him now is like, oh, yeah. let's let's cram Sam into another oh, game. He was in he was in Watch Dogs Legion, right? Oh, that, that's the other thing. He, he, he was in oh, and he has a cameo. Um, yeah, he was in. Uh, what's the other Watch Dogs game? Not the lead. Not the two. Wasn't he in one? Wasn't he in he DLC in, in one? He was in Ghost Recon. A uh, ghost. The Wildlands. Wasn't he in Wildlands one? Yeah. He is. Yeah. Oh man, I feel like he's like he exists only to be put in another series. I know. What's what do we call that? That's like cameo? that's like I guess it's Cam Young. But what character? Cameo. That's like kind of like what Samus is now. Yeah, she's just, she's just a property <laughs> she to just, be used in other properties. Same with Captain Falcon. They just cameo in things now. Oh, that's Jesus. Is, is Waluigi <laughs> the ultimate cameo? Because he's never had his own game. I mean, technically, yeah, he's he literally will never get one. Nintendo doesn't like him because they didn't make him (laughs) kick him out of the basement. Nintendo. Um, Sorry, that's enough tangents. Um, David, what have you been playing? Oh, I've been playing some fun ones. Uh, First game I played through all the way is The Last Campfire. Uh, This was released late-ish last year and it was made by Hello Games, people who made No Man's Sky. Uh, and it is a fun, adorable little puzzle game about dying. My favorite. Fun. Great. I love dying. It, you play as one of the ember uh, people called the embers. These little, uh, you're you're literally like amorphous and covered in a cloak, so you can't. So really Dark see Souls. Who you are. Sure. <laughs> I never played that game either. <laughs> uh, but like, it's it's basically a series of puzzle rooms very reminiscent of like breath of the wilds puzzle shrines um where you're essentially each time you complete a puzzle the idea is you're helping one of the other embers um move towards acceptance of like their own impending Mm -hmm. death basically that sounds like journey a little bit a little bit yeah it's very reminiscent of journey too but it's really just like a ton of those puzzle rooms there's um a weird like scottish or irish narrator that's fantastic who just narrates the whole thing pretty much that sounds lovely um it's very good it was very calming and and just fun and their portrayal of death was very interesting like the places where the like all the puzzling and stuff that takes place is very much like a limbo concept where it's like the waiting room before going to die and you have to like accept your death in order to move forward and like basically the whole time is you trying to get someone to accept that they're dead so that the path stops being blocked for everyone else is pretty much what it ends up being and it was very good i really enjoyed it um how long was it were the right difficulty it's like four four or five hours something like that that's not bad sounds about right yeah no it was good length puzzles were fun not 
none of them were difficult enough where I was like, oh god, I have to try this like ten times, and then I'm gonna just look it up. I didn't look up anything. I just went through it. Some of them took a bunch of tries, but none of them were hard enough that I was like, fuck this. Mm-hmm. Um, another game I just started, which is ironic. Uh, I just started Life is Strange like a couple days ago, and then today they announced they're remastering it. So I was like, well, <laughs> that's kind of annoying, but whatever. <laughs> So when, just, is, uh, when, is that, when is that remaster coming or is it out already did they coming just out in or... the fall okay. so probably like september october time gotcha. frame um so i'm gonna finish life is strange but uh, i'm not very I'm not even, i don't think i have even finished the first episode or whatever yet so uh, i still got a ways to go but it seems pretty cool so far um messing yeah. with time is very fun and a game that i first talked about on this podcast <gasps> That I am very, very near finishing sure. Tales of Fantasia. Woo! I'm in the last dungeon, like probably three quarters of the way through the last dungeon. Just got to kill a couple bosses and I'll be done with that game. It finally got good, guys. Yay. It 50 took 30 hours. hours. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> it, took, it took 30 hours. Well, 20 is more accurate. It took 20 hours to become like a fun game. But boy, I'm having a good time with it now. Took forever. Uh, it is it is the year of the jrpg i don't know if you know that i mean it is i don't know if you know this but i have made a promise to basically play through every single tales game that has a good english translation i thought you were going to say every single jrpg i was <laughs> like wow it's gonna be a long oh, no, year no uh, i'm gonna play i'm gonna play through all the tales games and do a review series where i rank all of them against each other so Ooh. that's my project for the year so i'm almost done with game one and it's march so i need to kick my shit into gear because <laughs> there's like 13 games you should also rank uh is there a is there a tales from sonic game you should slip that one in there <laughs> maybe as a joke I'll, I'll do a bit with that i'm sure tales from sonic. Uh, i need uh, you better credit me for that thank you <clears throat> copyrighted it's officially copyrighted there you go oh damn you got, <laughs> got him you got me that's how James well, Cameron did it. it <laughs> oh, damn it. No, uncopy, uncop. You played yourself. <laughs> bankruptcy. Um, that's great. I, um, I've i been meaning to talk to you about Dragon Quest, but I haven't been playing it, so I can't talk to you about it. But <laughs> Well, and fun fact, I've actually never played a Dragon Quest game. So. Well, that works too. Well, J- I'm I mean, not the one to talk to you about it. I just meant JRPGs in general because I am. I we I've taken a break from Chrono Trigger, but mostly because I'm sick of playing it in hour and a half segments. So I told Chris yeah, like we I need to spend like a that. day playing it. Um, so we're gonna do that at some point. But Dragon Quest Eight, I'm at the point where I, the guide says I should be a certain level to beat this boss, and I've tried him a couple times, and I'm like, yeah, the guide's right about this. But then I'm trying to level up, but leveling up sucks sometimes. Uh, And all the leveling guides I found were like, hey, when you're level 87, you can go here for the post-game leveling. And I'm like, I'm not in the post-game. So I finally found a video that was like, hey, if you just want to level up, there's like this metal slime underneath this bridge that you can just like spawn all the time. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go do that. So, thank you, finally. I know. I was like, thank you, oh, blessed YouTube video from 2004. (laughs) Um, the yeah, they're perfect. Um, so before YouTube existed, no, I I just picked the year. <laughs> just wait, ignore, wait him. A, just ignore Call him. out my bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, it was on. Debating. Debating yeah, it was on. E, what is it? E bombs world. Um, <laughs> God, what was it on called? Addicting on Addictinggames.com. That's where it was. <laughs> um, oh, you guys are the most annoying people ever. Um, before <laughs> it, it, wow, I'm trying to decide if, Ian. <laughs> crazy no ian's definitely the worst that man hates everything <laughs> <laughs> it's true he's not here he can't defend himself um hi Hercronium in the chat um yeah ian hates everything i was debating whether or not we should go to the news or we should rate a game for the subpixel rating system um it is a bit a little it is a little bit light on the news this week um so yeah let me let's hit the news first Let's right. hit the news. Let me cue up the news theme. Uh, news theme graciously supplied by Zach from Save Data. Here we go, folks. Time for the news. Oh, no. Oh, no. There we go. This is very folksy sounding. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? 
I'm so, so glad you clipped that out for that episode. <laughs> he played it so so perfectly. Sorry, uh, sorry, recording. I forgot to unmute it about halfway through, uh, but I'm not playing it again. Um, yeah, he he like whipped out his guitar, and there was perfect silence on either side, and it didn't clip at all. And I was like, "How did you do that?" It's perfect. Um, yeah, that's it. Raw, uh, folks. Lots of things going on in the gaming industry and around the gaming industry. Um. Yeah, it's just like sorry. I'm so over the pl- all over the place this week. <laughs> um, who want anyone want to go first? Anyone got something they really want to talk about? David, I know you hosted mm. around the monitor, so you might be I, antsy to talk about something. I did just host it around the monitor. Um, oh man, you know what? I'm going to talk about the PS5 VR controller. Yeah, do Looks it, girl. Sweet. Uh. Listen, they, they finally showed the PSVR 2 controllers. I'm very happy about this. Not that they showed them. I, they could have waited forever. I don't care. <laughs> I am so happy they don't have those stupid fucking lights on the top anymore. <laughs> I am so happy those are gone. Just beyond joyous. Like, just stop using optical things for VR. Like, just just stop. stop. But how am I going to play lightsabers? With the, the <laughs> sensor rings that they put in there instead oh. of stupid fucking balls on top of the goddamn controllers that are shaped like broomsticks. I hate those things so much. They're horrible. I mean, yeah, they're, they're just bad. And, and like, we've come past them in VR. Like, the Index has the knuckle controller, the Rift and or the new Rift and the new uh, Quest controllers are both uh, using similar types of the PSVR that have the, the ring around the controller set different ways for some reason, even though they're being by the same company. But I digress. Um, they are just so improved so much over the old style of controller. Like the old Vive controllers, I hate because they are basically PSVR controllers, but heavier. Um, yeah they're a stick that you hold it's a wiimote basically (laughs) um so i'm just i'm overjoyed at this that they made the right decision especially seeing some of their earlier designs that came through with patent news a few weeks ago where's Um, the bananas yeah where are the bananas um (laughs) show me the bananas i I said on our show i might have even said on this show i don't remember if i was on that week or not um the banana thing very cool not gonna get used and no I stand by that. Very cool technology. Never going to be used. <laughs> yeah. I, Wait, I would... can, you, can you explain it to someone who is only like vaguely aware of this? <laughs> yes, I can. So a few weeks ago, some Sony patent uh, trawling came up where they patented a method for using really any object, but their example images was a banana, hence bananas, <laughs> um, where basically the vr system could use like camera and sensors to figure out the shape of the object object and essentially project virtual buttons onto the object in vr so like oh you can say this part of the banana is the x button this part is the square button and you could put your fingers there in vr and use it as a controller so it's kind of like a vr version of milo from the connect with peter molyneux (laughs) He was like, oh, you can hold up this piece of paper to the Kinect and Milo can interact with it in the virtual world. Yeah, kind of, except the idea was that it becomes your controller for the game. So, like, maybe, like, two games, if this comes out, use it. The only thing it seems like such a stretch and you'd have to use, like, a common object that literally everyone will have. Mm. But I wonder if it'll scan stuff. That's because that's kind of the impression I got. Either it was yeah. like seeing the banana and knowing to map it to yeah, that. Yeah, it would have to see it. Yeah. But so the the so only thing I was thinking they is weren't super clear on that whether it would use like the PlayStation camera or if they were going to pull an Oculus and put cameras into the headset and you just like, yeah. look at it. it. That wasn't clear. That wasn't part of the patent. Um, I was just wondering if like you could put like if you had a wall, not a wall, it's a bad thing, but if you had like a flat piece of paper or something or a cardboard, Mm -hmm. if it would be like, oh, this is your data pad and it will like map like your HUD and stuff on that. So like you could like click that or like you could have a box in front of you. Like almost like they could give you Nintendo Labo stuff and it would just project onto it. Here's a thought. 
you could just have the controller and hold those objects in VR. That's true, but at I'm least you get the <laughs> at least you get the physical pushy push, like a the yeah, the soft like, squish of a banana. It, it and sounds like these really controllers angry. have finger tracking and stuff anyway, so like, it's fine. They they don't need that. Please don't. It's, it's I just want like, it's cool, bananas. But it will be a giant waste of time for how much effort it will be to set that up. Yeah, that's true. Kojima will find a way to put it in <gasps> Death Stranding too. Kojima, no. oh, I want in so many too. ways. I don't want that. The <laughs> Stranding is a ten out of ten. We all know it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like a five. I think I rated it a five in my spreadsheet. I oh, I am so I was so surprised at how much I enjoyed Death Stranding. Everything like, except the story is good in that game. I was so surprised how I enjoyed the middle like four hours of that game and how yeah. much I hated the beginning four and the ending like yeah. 15. Yeah. But that I just didn't know what was going so on. good. Yeah. The middle four hours of that game work fucking no. great. I'm not gonna argue on that. The one. the world I, and the the game mechanics and, and the, the music the music the, and the, the low roar discography <laughs> and the like doing things is so good. Oh, yeah, I could do it forever. Man. They just and, went low budget. They didn't want to render people, so they're like, ah, everyone's underground. Well, I meant like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> no, I agree with that. Iceland. That's it was all, just like, like the makings. <laughs> the just yeah, it was the makings of a much better game. That's also, somehow the United States. Uh, uh, it's because <laughs> time is accelerating. The time yeah, fall, David. I don't know if you that's know. That's what makes the U.S. look like Iceland. Time. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> Iceland's newer than America. <laughs> I don't have time to get into this with you, but it's... Do you know how volcanoes work? <laughs> it's a good game. Um, man, but oh, I did a lot of mountain climbing in that game. It was very fun. Yes. Um, if they had a mode in that game... Sorry, one more point. If they had a mode in that game where you could just walk and not worry about stupid BTs and stuff... Yes. And mules and Any... stuff, I would be into that. Anytime I started to go somewhere cool, I was like, oh, I'm finally going to get to this point that I've wanted to go to since I saw it on the map. It was full of BTs. And I was yeah. like, okay. Or extremely so inconvenient. Well, then yeah, you get, or just, yeah. <laughs> you get that hook thing that, you, like, BTs don't matter anymore, but it's, even at that point, you still, you still it, can't the run in. No, you get, like, the no, like, knife the that cuts the hook. umbilical cord. Oh, yeah, cord. it cuts the cord, yeah. yeah. <sighs> I got to replay that game now. Uh, anyways, no, why? No. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> it looks. It also looks so good on PC oh, yeah. and That's runs true. incredibly well. It's yeah, so well like optimized. But... And Conan O'Brien's in it. He is. <laughs> yeah. I found Conan. Got the otter hat. Oh, yeah. I hate. I hate everything. Uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna. I what I want to talk about because it's easy and I don't have to think much about it is that EA Play is coming to PC for Xbox Game Pass. Ooh, that's a lot of work. Um, and don't worry, folks. EA is not making it easy. If in case you thought they were going to make it easy, it, they're not. Because you have to do things like s download the EA app. Step-by-step -step guide. Oh, my gosh. Folks, don't worry. Just download the Xbox app. Then download. Uh, then sign into it. First of all, sign into it, folks. Then you can choose an EA game and play. Click install. And then you can install the EA desktop app. And then supposedly after that, they don't say it, but supposedly after that, you can play the game. There's hit games on here, including Anthem. And I'm just going to stop there. <laughs> so folks, you can play Anthem. Uh, no, there's lots of games on here. Uh, I've played a couple that are, because this is already on the Xbox. I love Game Pass. I'm a huge proponent of Game Pass. I think it's incredible. I think Sony is stupid for not even having anything remotely or just now starting to have a thing remotely close to it with their uh what's that called playstation collection but that's not even really game pass no, ps plus collection yeah or wait well they have ps now which is more like game pass than yeah anything. well which has gotten better because ps now was stream only for a while right yeah. when, it first, when it first came out i think it was you yeah can now it's like install i think it installs games that are like ps4 games but then it has to stream ps3 or vita or whatever games yeah which is fair like i i get why that's the case um but it's just great i've i've i think i've tried the most games ever in the past couple of years because of game pass than i ever have because um you can just you can just install it and just try a game and be like, hey, this is great. You don't, I mean, you could theoretically do that with Steam. You just can't play for more than two hours. Um, 
But yeah, it, it's just really cool to be able to be like, oh, here's a game within the past five years that I've wanted to play. I didn't shell out $60 for it, and I can play it now. And if I really enjoy it, maybe I will end up buying it once if it comes off Game Pass. Or if I don't enjoy it, I don't have to kick myself and be like, oh, now I can't get a game for another month. Um, it's cool. I, I like all the stuff Microsoft does with Game Pass. And I think including EA Play is a really good idea. I'm hoping they make that process a little bit easier. I know that's probably all EA being like... I think I said this to Chris. It's like uh, the former president putting his name on the stimulus checks. It's like, oh, we got to They got to know each day. They, they got to know it's us. <laughs> and uh, I feel like that's kind of what they're doing with it. Um, well, I think even if you buy like EA games on the Xbox app for PC, I think it still launches them in Origin. Because that's, oh. that's what it does for Steam, too. Like if you buy an EA game on Steam, it launches in Origin. Yeah, it does that same thing for... Uh... Uh, it was the first time I had ever played an EA game on my new computer. It was when I played uh, Fallen Order. And mm-hmm. I completely forgot that I had to have the wow. EA thing. Uh, Origin. Ins- I don't even know what it's called. I completely forgot that I had to have it installed. And I was like, you really just want to make this difficult for everyone, don't you? Like, yeah. It's just another step. It's the it's same like- thing with Oculus. Like, you start... A, you start playing Half-Life Alex, and it's like, oh, got to open Oculus because you're using Oculus. And, oh, we're actually going to run it through Oculus, but you have to start it in Steam. It's just, oh, yep. it frustrates me so much. I feel like uh, Ubisoft hit that sort of halfway point where they're like, we're going to make you have this, but it's not going to be the worst thing ever. Yeah. Um, I don't think Origin's that bad. I think the Ubisoft no. app's worse nowadays. Yeah. That's Origin was garbage when it came out, though. Yes. Like, I it ate all of your computer's resources. God, I don't know why people think they can do things better. Oh, well, I guess there'd be no innovation. I don't know why I even said that. They just uh, love money. Yeah. I love money. <laughs> uh speaking of money, Kyle, what do you want to chat about? Uh I'm I'm thank you for that segue cuz we're going to talk about the fact that uh actually I don't this kind of has to do with something that we put in the in the news thing, but the FIFA scandal with EA continuing on EA's uh, wonderful, you know, treatment of of gamers and and game developers. Um, there's this whole thing going on with FIFA now, where there was different. Uh, I can't. <laughs> I'm like, I should just open up this thing that I'm looking at. But basically, there was a player or someone on Reddit who found out that with the way that FIFA now works, if you wanted to create like your dream team, like like your your perfect team mm-hmm. to play out a, 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 a series of games or whatever, it would take you if you if you didn't pay, it would take you twenty two thousand hours. Wow. To to grind to get that team. And if you did want to pay, it would cost you. Hold on. I have the number here. Eighty thousand euros. Wow. 80,000 euros to come up with your dream team. And uh, that all has to do with this big scandal that's going on right now that I don't even think I can get into because I it's so confusing and I don't play FIFA at all. I've played FIFA one time in college. So if anyone here knows more about FIFA, please explain what is going on. But it's I, yeah. I just don't that's basically, wild. from what I understand, like a couple EA employees had the ability to like give people who paid them money free packs that had better cards in them for ultimate teams. That's essentially what it boils down to. It's more complicated than that, but it's basically employees giving away packs that have better things in them for lots of money on but top of the 80,000 euros. All. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's I like, think, I think they were getting like a hundred, like a couple hundred euros for a, like two packs or something like that it was crazy for like a digital thing they can just generate i was gonna say like how come these people who are buying them didn't report them but i guess like when you're that into a thing you're like oh i'm getting this cheaper well they're the ones buying it like i feel like that's not something you come across unless you're looking for it that's true that's that's true they just advertise on craigslist who wants to buy so Okay, so I see. So on top of this game having incredibly shitty uh, chances, including uh, in paying and grinding, also employees are on the side selling separate packs. Mm-hmm. That's 
yeah, here's here's the the tweet thread. I'll just read the one tweet where it does the eighty thousand. It says spending actual money, one hundred million coins from FIFA points, which I guess is the currency you use to buy these card packs. Um, assuming an average of a hundred thousand coins profit per twelve thousand FIFA points, uh, I need to purchase one thousand times twelve FIFA points at a cost of eighty dollars. Per 12K, I will need to spend a total of 79,990 euros on FIFA points, which is just absolutely insane to me. Like, oh, I, I mean, we better yeah, get started, right? Yeah, I mean, I got, I got like, I got my stimmy, teams. so I can. Yeah. Your <laughs> I, was, I mean, I spent a little bit on computer parts, but I can just toss that in, get our oh, FIFA just... Ultimate team, then we'll be. I mean, what do you get after you get your ultimate team? Do I get my money back? <laughs> no, you don't. Get Wait, you just have a just good better, team at that more. point. What? What's the point of winning? Are you winning, son? Oh, I hate this. I hate this. No, Dad, I'm playing an EA game. <laughs> no, Dad. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm um, reading the surprise mechanics, Dad. <laughs> um, I, I just want to bring this up. I threw this on here because. Uh, we reported, I want to say two weeks ago, that a GTA Online player uh, modder actually fixed the loading times in GTA awesome. 5 Online. Uh, basically, I uh, remember Ian explaining it, like, every time GTA 5 went to connect online, it would manually check two files all the way down. And so this guy changed it so it would just, I think it was either, it would do it faster, like it wouldn't... I guess it would say, oh, here's one, 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 two, one, two, one, two. So instead of doing the previous ones, it would only do the new line and check the new line. So 70% faster, I think, was the end of thing. And so now uh, Rockstar's official update is coming. I believe they even paid the man. $10,000. Which, $10, which is a lot kind of Biden cool. bucks. Yeah, that's, <laughs> oof, that's a lot of stimmies. I just count everything in stimmies now. Fourteen dollars. That's that's a percent of a one percent stimmy. How many 1%? how many stimmies yeah. is my salary? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> negative eight stimmies. You pay oh, us dang. actually. You're a volunteer. I forgot I was working for EA. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's how Save Data works too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I pay money to work on podcasts. <laughs> yeah, you gave me a hundred bucks to be on this. I do fuck. <laughs> I just take it out of your bank account. <laughs> just call it even. Um, I I yeah, I've given you my routing number. Yeah, what did you think <laughs> routing meant? <laughs> it's rooting. Um, um, I just think that's really cool. I like when stuff like this happens. Where I'm not. It, it usually happens with neglected games that fans end up fixing them. I just it's infinitely more funny that this is one of the most played games and best still. selling games and yeah still of all time and some guy just fixed it and i just i i can't believe i mean did everyone just become complacent while like waiting for like like they were just That's like what i'm wondering this is how it is it can't be any better than this rockstar thanks for but I then mean, people have been complaining about it for literally yeah. almost yeah. a decade but you would think <laughs> when red dead online came out and that loads super fast like rockstar people, even just people. rockstar would be like yeah. oh let's just re-implement this backwards Listen, but, why why would they go back and do work when people are still giving them like boatloads of money that's true when they don't have to do shit you're right. Shut I'm up. Saying. <laughs> um, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, moving on, David. Uh, what else? What else you got for me? Um, I guess I just want to bring this up. I don't want to dive super deep into it because it is complicated. Uh, and that is the wildness over at Riot Games happening right now. Um, it's a lot. This was. Weeks or months ago at this point, uh, there's a lawsuit filed against um, Nicolo Laurent, the current CEO of Riot Games, claiming a lot of sexual harassment and misconduct by his ex-secretary, I want to say, executive assistant, something like that. Yeah, his executive assistant. Um, and 
as we all should everyone's like okay well we believe the accuser in this so that's not great you should figure your, your crap out right uh they did an investigation and legitimately shocking everyone it seems that they concluded that no sexual harassment or misconduct was done and that actually may be true which is the real shocking part wow um they released some court documents uh about uh, i think it had like depositions and affidavits from people that had been contacted by the plaintiff and it was some of them were from a couple other women that work or used to work at riot who she had hit up telling them she would split the winnings that they get from the laurent family to if they joined her side in the case and they were all like that's fucked up uh <laughs> no because <laughs> he didn't do anything to us like we don't know if he did anything to you but he sure didn't do anything to us and we can't speak for things Jeez. we didn't see um and there's also apparently some history of like lying on her resume and which that part a ton of people do that i was gonna say um, I was like, yeah shocker. For everyone oh that. shocker a ton of people do that <laughs> take me the to jail that was, that was sort of big is like she i think had another false accusal thing at another company that ended up counter suing her for libel Oof. like if you have a claim and it doesn't go well sure like who cares you could have had a claim it could be completely like valid and nothing happened of it whatever uh the counter suit part is like oh okay that doesn't look good on you yeah um so i guess moral of the story yeah we should still believe accusers but also we for the final verdict we should look at the evidence and come to that conclusion also don't so, yeah. don't lie just don't lie and don't yeah. lie don't do that either it helps not yourself or anyone when you lie about that thing. i learned so. that in kindergarten <laughs> Well, she didn't go to kindergarten, obviously. She oh. lied about it on her resume, so. jeez. <laughs> oh, uh, but it's <laughs> wild, because, like, Riot's had problems. This oh, is yeah. a new thing. Um, and it's very, I guess, it's sort of good to hear that for once it wasn't happening. <laughs> Everyone at Riot's like, can we, can we applaud ourselves for, like, not doing something horrible? Ugh. Yeah, and, like, I had talked to a couple people that work there that I know. Uh, and basically everyone there that I'm aware of was on the same page of like, we don't think this is happening like company wide, but if he, if they find he did this shit, he needs to go. Yeah. Um, yeah and for it sure. sounds like that's not the case. So cool. Sweet. But boy, is that complicated? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like riots always in some sort of wilderness wildness. Um, the, the stuff that happened the last time with them, that, was true and that person was yeah 100 percent right? true they okay. are potentially in the hole for up to 400 million dollars wow um, paying okay. out too i don't because they know. had they had negotiated a lower settlement and i believe like a government agency came in and was like yo that is not high enough you are now liable for this wow so yeah yeah okay they definitely did the other stuff this one they might be in the clear on Gotcha. How many stimmies is four hundred million dollars? <laughs> it's about eight eight stimmies. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. yeah. I did the math. Don't worry. Just give me it all. <laughs> um, hold, hold. Oh man, it's getting late. Oh, he's doing the actual math. Four hundred. <laughs> this is riveting, folks. They, they did he's the math. typing the numbers uh, in. That is roughly two hundred and eighty-five thousand seven hundred and fourteen stimmies. Oh That's man. Wild. Please, Grandpa Joe, send me some more stimmies. <laughs> Please send me 240, however many thousand stimmies. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, is there anything anyone else wants to talk about? Or we can move move this this podcast towards the end of the line. Um, the only other thing I really wanted to talk about is how much I hate Bobby Kotick. Oh, Just good. I'm glad you're talking like about that, this. don't like that, man. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, if you didn't know, Activision let go of... I'm trying to remember the exact number. It was like a, almost 200. And I think we don't have an exact number. It's between 50 and 190. Okay. Somewhere in there. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm looking at it on uh, PC Gamer and they say nearly 190 Activision Blizzard employees, including roughly 50 from the company's esports division, uh, which I know they've recently been trying to like bump up. Um, yeah. And for letting go of somewhere between 50 to 190 people, uh, Bobby Kotick gets like $200 million. So like half, like 200,000 stimmies. 
Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, there, there's a lot of people annoyed at that, but it's sort of, you know, the name of the game when you're a CEO and you quit or get let go, you get your golden parachute. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And people are just angry. There was a union sponsored uh, investment or I'm sorry, an investment group that works with union sponsored pension funds to enhance long term stockholder value, which is the most amount of economic uh, vocabulary I've said in a while um, that were complaining that he should not get this two hundred million dollars for doing essentially what he what he did to to get to where he was, uh, yeah. which, you know, that's. That's capitalism, but just, yeah. So I just want to say this picture of him in this article is terrifying. It's it's very scary. It's like, also, he is in one of my favorite movies of all time, and I don't. I oh no. he's, he's in Moneyball. You ever seen Moneyball with Brad Pitt and Jonah I Hill? I wanted to. He's, he's the it. owner of of the Oakland A's, and he's not bad. It's really <laughs> weird. He's like he's not a bad actor in this. In, I mean, he was playing the owner of a huge expensive company so it makes sense that he would know how to act like that but um yeah so he's in he's in moneyball he's in like three scenes huh. with brad pitt and jonah hill God, i love Crazy. brad pitt he's always always munching on something always munching on something munch on me brad pitt uh anyways folks <laughs> flip that for the right. folks at home <laughs> Woo. um Moving on, uh, David, I know I briefly, I don't know if you actually did the task I, I assembled to you, but um, <clears throat> there's a new Let rating system you. that we invented uh, called the Subpixel Rating System, um, and it is where we rate video games based on the video games that are already on the list. Currently, the best and worst video game of all time is The Outer Worlds, not Wilds. Uh, it is a solid one out of one game. I don't know if you guys have ever played it, but according it's to us, game. it is the best. I, enjoyed it. <clears throat> um, I, didn't, I didn't finish it because I didn't think it was that interesting. I am it right there with my you. It was good. Yeah. But it recently got a 60 frames per second on Series Update X. Update on consoles, which is awesome. And they just got a new DLC drop, too. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know if you gen I don't know if you gentlemen would know this, but do you know if the DLC for first party Xbox games is it's not on Game Pass, right? You still have to pay for it. I think it depends. Okay, yeah. I gotta check. I think, it's, I think it's a case by case thing. Yeah, because I, I want to play it with all the DLC now. Because uh, Karen played it and beat it when it came out, and she loved it. And that was the main reason I didn't play it and beat it because she was always on the Xbox playing it. Um, so I need I've to heard the that. DLC is really good though. Oh, from see, a few now you're stories. tempting me even more. For our number one game of all time. Just being honest. Yeah. Um, Anyways, what what if it's your your time to shine? I remembered you asked me this question, and I thought of an answer when you first told me that I needed to do this, and I forgot what it was. Perfect. Until a couple minutes ago. <gasps> what list would it would it be if it had the Outer Worlds on it, but did not have Outer Wilds? No. <laughs> <laughs> You've ruined the list. Oh, okay. The out. You so sorry. It's the outer. It's outer wilds. There's no the. Um, Let me make sure. I I think there is also a the. Okay, you check for me. Uh, so it is up to the three sorry, of us. No, it's just it's just outer wilds. Just no, the... it's heroes outer wilds. Um. <laughs> jokes Not it only that. took one week for this to completely devolve yep um <laughs> gentlemen i so there might be disagreement i don't know if there is i i will say that i think outer wilds is better than outer worlds i 100 percent agree with that statement. i would agree with that okay man this is the easiest one we've had so far and we've only <laughs> had one to argue about did you? I missed the first one. Did you argue about what game to put on here? No, not at all. So the, the, <laughs> I'm saying this is the first one we've had to argue, and it was well, easy. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I basically I said to Chris at work, "What's the most average game you can think of?" And I think he said The Outer Worlds. So I was like, "Okay, so The Outer Worlds is the new five out of ten. Like the re the same way like everyone makes average games seven out of ten. I just want to make average games five out of ten. And so we were talking about it on the podcast and then I devolved into chaos as it does with Chris and Ian and me. I mean, Chris is the founder of Chaos Jeopardy on our Yes. Channel, so. so it became 
it kind of devolved into where we're just we have a rating system but we've the only games on the rating system are games we have rated on the podcast similar to giant bombs the ranking of fighters where they only rank fighting games they've played on stream so there's just a bunch of terrible fighting games on there and some people i told the story last week but some people on reset era took the list seriously at one point yeah and it is the funniest if you want like to laugh for like 15 minutes it's the funniest of video game nerds being like, I can't believe they said that. Like, it's <laughs> so funny. And it's like eight pages in where someone points out what the list is and like everyone flips, but oh, it's incredible. So anyways, that was the impetus for this list. And now we officially have two games on it. I'll update the uh, Google Drive after this. Two games, or are they the same game? Are they? The new best game of all time, folks. I don't know if you've ever played it. It is the... And it's not the... It is Outer Wilds. There you go. <laughs> and I don't mean to be so harsh, but the worst game of all time, according to Subpixel, is The Outer Worlds. Mm. I'm sorry. That's just... That's, that's heart, bummer, heartbreaking. Right I'm not that's even going to touch it now. If, Wait, so if, just... Just to clarify, when when you told me about this, I thought we were picking the new game for the list from the list of games that we played that week. Oh, yeah, I asked this question of Will too. That's I believe. smart. We should do me. that. Yeah, because that's I was I was fully prepared to like fight to the death for a game I haven't even beat yet, Half Life Alex, oh. as being better than the Outer uh, Worlds, and I was like expecting us to to have to fight, but then you know Damn it was it. just sort of. Kyle, you're not allowed nowhere. on this podcast anymore. I'll well, leave. I I'll asked leave. I asked David to do it, but that's a better idea. That's an even yeah, better I, idea. Because I think that would that would encourage. Well, that's what I asked. I know, but <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to you, honey. I, I asked it on stream. So that's what counts. He's like, oh, could you prep this? And I was like, oh yeah, sure. Wait, but is it a game that I'm playing? And he's like, no, no, no it could be anything. I'm like, okay. See, I didn't I click think... there for me. I was so concerned that I was right. <laughs> no, I just think that would encourage you. It's like if you want to nominate a game, you have to play it within a week at least. See, so that's it, like, even better because then each person has to nominate a game and then you can yeah. really argue. I God, like, we can damn it. Do that. I'm fine with that. Well, no, we, we already got the Outer Wilds. I mean, we'll leave it. We'll, that was the beta test. and then That we'll, was the beta. We'll, no, that is genuinely, sorry, uh, Article 1 of the Subpixel <laughs> rating system, as ratified by David and Kyle, is that not each person on the show per week will nominate one game from a the list of games they played that week to be considered and there shall be a vote in which considerations will be added to the great list i like so it thus say the game to uh, be included ding, ding. and then we Yay. have to argue about where it goes yes okay, chaos too excellent i like Oof. that that's good it's going to oh. be good I might have to be on more of these then. <laughs> yes. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, I was going to tell. Uh, well, when, I, when Ian said he was going away, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll find some guests or something. And I felt so bad because, <laughs> not really, but Ian was like, you know, you could just ask Jake and Kyle. I go, oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I messaged Jake and Kyle. And Jake's like, yeah, I can't make it. And Kyle's like, you know, someday Kyle and Jake will be on the same stream for weeks. We've once. never, I, the only time we've been on stream together is, I can't remember, I, I think it was for Extra Life this, this past year or whatever, when, um, when, uh, Ian got slapped. Yes. By, oh, uh, wait, Ian. um, Roller Coaster was Tycoon? Last year? Oh, yeah, I forgot about and that. And the only other one is Star Wars script. Yes. How did I forget about those? I don't know. Maybe you just hate Jake. I mean, he Fair. should know that by now. <laughs> I mean, but we've we've known each other for that long. I don't think I've oh, known Oh, Jake's great. He's he's terrible. He's awful. Yeah, he's awful. We hate him. We should have him on. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to kick him out of the out of subpixels and tell him that. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't listen to this anyways because he he's doesn't the worst. Watch this, yeah. Folks, I'm playing the ending music because we're done. That's it. Hey. I keep these things to an hour, like an efficient robot. Guys, next week, this show will not be live. It will be pre-recorded, but it'll seem like it's live because I'm going to premiere it like it's live. We have a special guest 
uh, that I'm not going to spoil right now. It's not even that special because only David would know who he is. But anyways, it's we... David. Yeah, it's David. It's no, it's, 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 it's Jack Black. It's Peter Jackson's Jack Black. <laughs> Folks, we are Subpixel. You can find all of our great content at subpixelfilms.com. They'll bring straight to our YouTube channel, even though it says most of the time when I go to it that it's not a secure link. Uh, it's not my fault. It's just not a secure link. Uh, joining me today was the great one and only Kyle Bailey. Thank you for joining me. You can find him on Twitter at what is your Twitter? Kyle of the Beard. Kyle of the Beard. I knew that. And you can also find uh, Save Data's David on Twitter at something. Uh, Mizuki13. Thank you. I should. I don't those. have a good easy one to. <laughs> it's <laughs> really, <laughs> really not. You should also um, check out our podcast over at Save Data Team on YouTube and podcast services around the world. Yes. You don't have to do that, though. And they have a great video that Chris is working on that I've seen a bit of. And I am what is it about? very looking forward to it. I can't even spoil that. I can't even talk about it. What? But to. I, I, s- know. I signed I four right NDAs. Um, I wish. Yeah. Folks, this song is about to end, so I will salute you here. I can't do that. Around Monitor does that. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next week.